Merhabalar, ben Sercan. Welcome back to your Turkish journey. You know, every now and then, I dive into these Turkish forums to see what kind of questions the learners are asking to crack the code of this beautiful language. Now, what caught my eye recently is the struggle many of you face at the very beginning. Where to even start with learning Turkish? So, guess what? Today is the day. I have decided to jump right in and share my take on this puzzle with you. So, get your paper and be ready to take some notes and stay tuned because I have got some insights that might just kickstart your Turkish journey. And trust me, you don't want to miss this. First of all, you should get familiar with the sounds of the letters of the Turkish alphabet. There are 29 letters. Eight of them are vowels and the remaining 21 are consonants. Getting familiar with these sounds lays a strong foundation, especially for those not so common pronunciations. And now, on to the heart of the matter, the real challenge many learners face. The love affair of Turkish language with suffixes. Trust me, we are talking about a lot of suffixes here. Turkish is an agglutinative language, meaning it piles on those suffixes like the layers of baklava. This leads to some interesting twists in pronunciation because we focus on easy pronunciation of syllables so much, especially when we attach suffixes one after another. This means we always try to keep the shape of our mouth in a certain way to pronounce the words more conveniently. And this idea manifests itself with all these concepts when we use suffixes. All of these grammatical concepts, which you are seeing right now, may exist in every word when you attach a suffix to it. This means when you drive any word or even when you are conjugating the verbs using suffixes. Because of that, you must get familiar with these concepts, first of all, before learning anything else. Hear me well, I'm telling you to get familiar with them. You can learn them very well during your journey as you practice. When you get familiar with them, this will prevent you from getting frustrated when you don't understand why certain things happen when you add suffixes. And trust me, this is a big thing. Vowel harmony focuses on how the vowel of the suffix changes. In two-way vowel harmony, the vowel of the suffix modifies in two ways. In four-way vowel harmony, the vowel of the suffix modifies in four ways. In addition, you should also keep in mind that there are words that do not follow the vowel harmony rule. Consonant harmony focuses on two things. How the consonant at the end of a word may modify when a suffix that begins in a vowel is attached to it and how the consonant at the beginning of a suffix may modify depending on the consonant at the end of the word it's attached to. Buffer letters primarily focuses on adding a consonant in between a word and a suffix when the word ends in a vowel and it is suffix begins in a vowel. Vowel mutation focuses on how certain sounds modifies certain vowels. Vowel omission focuses on how certain suffixes cause the omission of certain vowels. Once you have wrapped your head around these concepts, it is time to dive into noun cases. Noun cases define the changes in the forms of the nouns with the addition of suffixes. As the name implies, the noun case suffixes are attached to the nouns. Here you need to be careful. There are many types of nouns in Turkish. There are nouns like ev, araba, okul, but the adjectives can also be used as nouns, for example. There are nouns which are derived from verbs that are called verbal nouns, for example. Pronouns are also a form of nouns. So you can and you will see that the noun case suffixes are attached to those as well. After understanding how the noun cases work, you need to figure out how the basic sentences are formed in Turkish. I am pretty sure that Everyone has somehow learned or seen that the typical word order in Turkish is subject, object, and 
predicate. Yes, but this is just typical and too basic. You need to understand which part of the sentence comes after which part and what happens when we change the order of the parts in the sentences. Yes, in Turkish, the word order is actually extremely flexible. And finally, you need to get familiar at least how the verbs are conjugated in Turkish. You will learn the tenses and when they are used along the way. Of course, when you are going through all of these concepts as your fundamentals in your Turkish journey, you can learn how to greet people, how to make small talk. But these fundamentals, which I have just mentioned, will definitely help you to begin your journey more confidently and passionately. And guess what? All of these concepts I have just mentioned are available in my channel in detail. I leave the links in the description. If you have any questions at some point, you can always get in touch with me. Thank you very much. See you in the next videos.